Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Elo Bandit, and today I'm going to be talking about the evolution of the Generation 8 1 vs. 1 meta, all the way from November of 2019 to the present day. I'll be talking about all of the major changes, bans, uh, shifts to team building that we've seen, all of the major meta shifts I'm going to be covering in this video. In the very beginning, in November of 2019, when Generation 8 1v1 started, Sableye was able to control the meta using two sets. There is the Trick Disable set, which lets Sableye give his opponent a choice item and then disable that one move, reducing their opponent's options to zero and forcing a struggle. And then the other set being the Encore Disable set that does pretty much the exact same thing, uh, locks your opponent into one move and then prevents them from using that same move. So just taking a look at these teams really quickly, um, we'll see the Trick Disable goes alongside recover and then fling allows you to beat uh, other choice users so if you get if you trick and you receive another choice item you can fling that away and go ahead and use your disable recover tactics um, Sableye goes along really well with things like uh, Weezing and Mew which are great partners and um, at this point in the metagame Mew was seen as sort of the counterpart to Sableye uh, generally Sableye checks Mew with the trick set since you can uh, basically force it to lock itself into imprison but um, it's important to note that there is um, a Mew set that came into usage during the Sableye meta which was Encore Mew so anything carrying Encore can basically shut down Sableye's trick strategy since he gets locked into trick and ends up back with his own choice scarf um, imprison and transform of course allow Mew to take on pretty much anything slower than it or anything that can't KO it or two hit KO it and the last slot is whatever you need it to be. On this scene specifically, it's Shadow Ball uh, to deal with Choice Specs Dragapult, although that's not really an issue because there's a Scarf Togekiss. But the point is, um, Encore is used against Sableye. Um, a lot of other things that we see, Dark types are huge in usage because they are immune to Prankster. Uh, things like Grimmsnarl saw a lot of usage during this era because they were able to avoid uh, Sableye's Encore Disable shenanigans uh, while simultaneously having some way to take him down. In Grimmsnarl's case, it's the Fairy-type Spirit Break. Um, another common check to Sableye is Mimikyu with the choice to play rough. Um, that's why this team actually has Dracovish uh, with Roselli Berry to take out Mimikyu with the Rock Tomb Ficious combo. Um, other notable things of this era, we've got, oh right, <laughs> Assault Vest Swoobat with Klutz is a hilarious check to uh, Sableye because it receives a choice item um, but doesn't really care because Klutz means that the held item has no effect. So you you give Sableye the Assault Vest and then you can eventually take it out uh, with Calm Mind, Roost, and Air Slash. So you just never ever die because you can sustain your own HP with Roost. Eventually Calm Mind will put you in a point where Air Slash is a one hit KO. Um, other Pokemon that we see during this time, uh, Choice Scarf, Darmanitan, all over the place, Dragapult with a Choice Item or a Life Orb all over the place. This one's physical, generally we saw special during this period of time. Um, and let's see, more Scarf Darm, more Mimikyu, more Dragapult. You always have to have some sort of uh, Sableye counter, otherwise you will just lose in this era. And then the last thing that I was going to show, of course, is fling so if you know that you're going to get locked into one move um, it's not a bad idea to be carrying the move fling um, which can get rid of that potential choice scarf and allow you to uh, switch up moves and take out a disabling sableye so a lot of counterplay that's very specific very like this one move beats this one thing but otherwise does pretty much nothing which was not a super healthy metagame and eventually Sableye was considered far too over-centralizing with just its two sets um, that it basically defined the meta by itself and it was banned uh, January 3rd of 2020. And then after the Sableye era we had Mew. So Mew era looked a little bit different in the sense that it wasn't quite so heavily centralized. Um, Mew was not limited to the two sets that demolish everything. Mew has a enormous plethora of options. Um, it is generally using this set, which is Substitute, Imprison, and Transform. 
Um, transform, of course, is blocked by substitute. You can't transform into something that has a sub up. So, imprison turn one with maximum speed basically prevents your opponent from getting that sub up. Um, and then taunt does the exact same thing. You prevent your opponent from taunting your turn two transform. Uh, once you have turned into your opponent, um, they can only struggle against you since imprison means they can't use any move that you have and you now have all their moves. So basically, if you can't one hit or two hit KO the Mew and outspeed it, um, then you're basically just going to lose to Imprison Transform. It's a little bit over centralizing, not to the same degree as Sableye, but definitely a very, very powerful force and something that had to be um, dealt with in a few specific ways. So I'm just looking at these teams again. Um, a lot of the time it is Imprison Transform sub taunt. That seems to be the most popular Mew set, but the other options that it has, um, Mew was often running a Choice Scarf with Trick. Um, trick Scarf obviously defeats a wide range of opponents since you lock them into a move. Um, you lock them in, if it's in the case of Crustle, you lock it into Shell Smash. In the case of, um, let's see, what are some other good Mew counters? Actually, hold on, let, let, that's, that's the perfect segue into the Mew counters. So <laughs> a couple of funny things that came into usage during this Mew Imprison Transform uh, time were Copycat Sylveon, which uses the last move used in battle. So you'd come out against a Mew on turn one, hopefully not something that's gonna trick you with the Choice Scarf, but a regular Imprison Transform Mew. Copycat the Imprison, so you both imprison each other. And then when it does transform, um, you actually have more Recovery. You've got the Aya Papa Berry, which gives you 33% of your health back, and you have uh, max HP, max defense. So you actually win a struggle war against Mew, which is very, very funny uh, to watch. Other counters that came into popularity. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, Crustle was used quite a bit as a Mew check, since you can generally Shell Smash and Rock Wrecker anything that isn't tricking you. Um, this is TDA's special Mew set with a scarf, which was able to, um, actually TDA and I both used this exact team to achieve uh, Rex for the Mew suspect, which happened, uh, I want to say it was either late January or early February. Um, but either way, uh, Mew has just a ton of options. This is, a, this is a team that I was using quite a bit, which was Physical Scarf with Trick, because Scarf Trick is just unbelievably strong. And Excadrill, um, Excadrill huge during this period of time because Banded X Scissor or Scarf X Scissor is a decent Mew check. It's not a counter, but it can win. Um, it definitely beats Mimikyu and I feel like there was one other thing. Oh, right, with, with Excadrill, you can run um, I wonder if I have a life orb drill in here somewhere. Yes, I do, with Bulldoze and Earthquake. So if you go for the Bulldoze EQ combo with life orb, you will outspeed the Mew on turn two and successfully find the two at KO. This was a extra drill set that we saw all the time during this era. The 36 special defense allowing you to survive a Choice Scarf, Timid, Togekiss, uh, Fire Blast, which was one of the few good Mew checks. It's Trick, Scarf, Togekiss. Um, and then, of course, Iron Head deals with that. So, yeah, Excadrill, very powerful force. Um, also, I'd like to note Sub. Um, if you've got the Bulldoze off and you're still able to use Substitute, you don't even have to worry about finding a 2 hit KO on Super Bulky Mew. You can just Sub up, and they won't be able to transform if they're not carrying Substitute themselves. And just to further illustrate the variability of Mew sets, I have a couple of uh, Lure Mews. This is Tanga Mew, which was supposed to lure things like Golisopod and other bugs, since Tanga Berry, of course, reduces the first super effective bug type attack. We also saw things like uh, Cassid Berry Mew, but that was a little bit less common. Once again, same basic set, you're just imprisoning and transforming, and that's pretty much the whole game. Um, so Mew, let's see, a couple more. Um, Blunder Policy actually had a set. <laughs> this was, uh, this Mew is able to beat Cinderace as long as you only miss one, as long as you only miss one pump. If you miss two in a row, it doesn't work, but if you're pumping on the subs from a faster Cinderace, which is trying to get into blaze range to one hit KO you, 
you can just keep throwing out pumps. If you miss one, you'll get a speed boost, and then all of a sudden, you are able to outspeed and deal 75% of um, Cinderace's HP with the following Hydro Pump. So yeah, Mew did have a lot of options to beat the things that checked it, um, and that's the reason it was considered so much more variable and so much more, I guess, um, unpredictable than Sableye. The last team that I'll look at here is um, the anti-Mew sets that people would make, which was Trick Choice Mimikyu, uh, just lock the Mew into its imprison. Uh, once again, the Life Orb Excadrill with the Bulldoze Earthquake combo, and uh, Specs Dragapult, which will generally beat Mew, provided that it's not running uh, the Citrus Berry Shadow Ball Imprison combo itself. Mew was banned February 4th, 2020, um, alongside Moody, which was Quick Banned, the ability that gives you a random stat boost just because it was blatantly uncompetitive. Um, so the next era that we are going to look at is the Mimikyu era of Generation 8 1v1. This was quite an interesting time because it was the first time in the metagame that we weren't, we didn't have one ultimately over-centralizing threat. You didn't always have to build around the one big thing. Prior to this, it was Mew. Prior to that, it was Sableye. You always had to keep counters. Um, but people didn't really figure out how broken Salak Mimikyu was. Or at least they didn't spam it to the same extent until a little bit later in this era. Um, so obviously, Mimikyu has a lot of power by itself. It can run the Curse set, which slowly whittles away its opponent's HP 25% uh, of the time. And there's also the Choice set. So Choice Banded Mimikyu with the Wood Hammer was an amazing way to force out water types like Primarina. And um, there were a couple other sets... Choice Scarf Mimikyu definitely came into use at some point, um, but in general, what we would see is mostly Salak Berry Mimikyu with this exact set. Uh, you would get your curse off, um, put your opponent on a timer, let your disguise go, and um, stall out turns with Substitute and Protect. Once you are low on HP and you can't sub anymore, you just Phantom Force out. It works just like uh, Fly or Dig, where you disappear for a turn, let your opponent take one more thing of curse damage, and then you smash into them with your maximum attack, do 26% or 1% or whatever it needs to be, and finish off the match that way. Generally, Mimikyu, uh, you can beat with a faster Pokemon uh, or something with speed control, but given Salak Berry and Disguise's Generation 8 mechanics, there's actually ways to play around that where you simply substitute on turn 1, um, you take the damage from Disguise, you lose that 1 one eighth of your HP, and then you curse the following turn. And what that'll actually do is it'll put you in Salak range. So you'll get the speed boost, the curse will go off, you'll outspeed your opponent with your Protect Phantom Force combo, and still beat things that are faster than you. And I think that's the point when people really figured out how to use Mimikyu against, you know, faster threats, that Mimikyu became broken. In the sense that it was the most over-centralizing threat in the, in the metagame, and there were not enough things that could beat it reliably, uh, if they didn't notice that. Um, here's okay. So here's the choice scarf Mimikyu I was mentioning earlier. Uh, scarf Mimikyu is quite strong. It's a great answer to things uh, like Dracovish and uh, Dragapult, um, and even stall Pokemon. Things like Corviknight get locked into Iron Defense and eventually go down to uh, Ghost Move spam, which is pretty funny to witness. Um, so yeah, Mimikyu was running choice items, Life Orb, and mostly the uh, speed boost berry um, and it was deemed too over centralizing for the metagame excadrill rock blast steelix taunt cinderace um, iron head iron defense taunt corviknight uh, defensive darmanitan g actually do i have one of those yes i do uh this was a set that came into usage against mimikyu because you are actually able to take two hits from phantom force provided it's not choice banded um, that was pretty big. We actually saw quite a bit of defensive Darmanitan, which was pretty interesting. Uh, getting that two-hit KO on Mimikyu and avoiding the two-hit KO in return. Pokemon Home was released in early February, and Necrozma uh, decided to take over the metagame. So Necrozma, with basically just one set, became the new Mew. It was impossible to one-shot, it was very difficult to two-shot, 
and it could take you out uh, thanks to its massive special attack stat, its massive base power from Prismatic Laser, and Photon Geyser allowing it to KO the likes of Mimikyu straight through Disguise. Um, so this thing also has great special coverage with Heat Wave and Earth Power, and actually has pretty phenomenal physical coverage as well. We saw a decent amount of um, Rock Blast Necrozma in this era too. So still quite a bit of Mimikyu going on. Necrozma is used as a Mimikyu answer, and um, some other threats coming into play like uh, Weakness Pulse, Incineroar. Um, we saw quite a bit of Tyronitar. Uh, Tyronitar able to check Mimikyu with the Rock Tomb Heavy Slam combo. Um, Avalog with the Icicle Spear, another good check to Mimikyu. And then um, just a lot of Necrozma. Necrozma was pretty much everywhere. It was basically tier defining uh, for the short period of time that it was allowed. It was quick banned February 29th during Premier League, which was kind of an interesting time to ban it, but it did need to go, so we'll leave it at that. Um, after Necrozma, Jirachi came into play. Um, not everyone liked using just the standard Scarf Jirachi. I actually had quite a lot of fun using Calm Mind uh, Stored Power Jirachi alongside Mimikyu, but once Mimikyu was banned, um, Jirachi lost that check. There was no more, um, no, this is, this is after Mimikyu was banned, but before Jirachi was banned, because Mimikyu, uh, banned May 3rd of 2020, uh, Jirachi not banned until May 8th, so there was, uh, a little short week where just Jirachi was kind of having fun without any Shadow Sneaks to worry about, um, and this is what a team from that era looked like. Uh, quick shout out to Rapid Spin Blastoise, able to beat Leech Seeders, uh, which was a hilarious thing to see. A Whimsicott wanting to come in with that Babiri Berry. It's like, oh, I can eat up an Iron Head, no problem. And then it just gets spun on, and it can't do any lasting damage, and it gets Ice Beamed. Pretty funny, if you ask me. Uh, terrible Grimmsnarl set, don't even ask. Alright, so we are past the Mimikyu ban, past the Necrozma ban, and past Jirachi. So we get to May, uh, pre-DLC of Generation 8, uh, before the hidden abilities are released. We have sort of an interesting period of time where there is Primarina doing a lot, there's Sylveon doing a lot. I think um, the only S rank at this point in time is Primarina. Um, and Primarina seems kind of like a weird thing to jump up to, like, immediately number one spot. But truly, this thing is just so unbelievably bulky that you can't one-shot it. Like, it requires an enormous amount of damage to get through a fully invested um, Primarina. And I'm trying to find a better example here because the really bulky Primarina is actually... Here we go, Fizda. So check it out. If a Primarina has invested, like, this much HP in defense and it's running Bold Nature... There is nothing that can one-shot it without stab. You can't like just run an electric move, or you can't run a grass move and beat this thing. It will eat your move up, it will drop into torrent range, and it will one-shot you. Um, or it will two-shot you with Aqua Jet. But the point is, um, the only things that can beat this without stab are, I think, Gunk Shot, Huge Power, uh, Diggersby, and... I think even Adamant Haxorus fails to KO with Poison Jab. Um, but yeah, just it, it's an incredibly bulky Pokemon. Um, same thing with Sylveon. It's just super hard to take out in one. This is a team built by Close um, for 1v1 Ladder Tour. But yeah, these two threats, you just max out their HP, max out their defense, and there's just nothing that can really uh, take them out super, super consistently past um, things like Venusaur that just win with their typing. Um, so it, it's tough to muscle, muscle past these threats, you have to actually check them with a specific thing. Um, or at least you did until, da 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 da, starter hidden abilities released, we got Libero, and we got um, Grassy Surge, and Sniper. Now Sniper does absolutely nothing, nobody cares about Sniper and Teleon in 1v1. Uh, Grassy Surge Rillaboom is decent in 1v1, given that um, you basically become Tapu Bulu and your wood hammers decimate your opponents in one hit, which is really cool. Also, Grassy Seed lets you use um, acrobatics on turn one at max power. But really, I just want to talk about Libero because this is the huge shakeup to the metagame. All of a sudden, these two threats that no one could beat, Sylveon, oh god, why is my showing this one? This is uh, <laughs> Choice Band Sylveon with Quick Attack for Dracovish and uh, Dracozolt. 
because it for, it doesn't let them move first and they aren't able to KO you and it's hilarious. Um, but yeah, don't look at that. Let's look at instead... Um, here we go. So this is a better example. It's not a perfect example, but it's a better example. Um, Cindero, Cinderace with a choice band. Um, Libero letting it change type into whatever move it uses. Uh, Pyro Ball is, of course, your bread and butter. It doesn't make contact. You don't have to worry about Aegis Slash King Shield. You just spam that fire move until you win. Gunk Shot is the move that lets you beat Primarina and Zildjian. Um, up until this point, those two were pretty dominant. Hidden Abilities dropped, and Cinderace is the new big thing. Giga Impact lets you one-hit KO opposing Cinderace, and High Jump Kick um, is amazing versus things like Steelix that are trying to Rock Blast or Earthquake you. You just get the two-hit KO as a fighting type, and they cannot really touch you. But yeah, most important thing here is Libero Gunk Shot. This special defense investment actually enables you to tank um, a... I think it's uh, a Hydro Cannon from, from Fully Invested Primarina. Um after you miss Gunk Shot. So you actually get two chances to hit that 80% accurate move, um, making this thing just a really, really strong check to those otherwise dominant Pokemon. Um, I was able to update one of my previous teams that had uh, Diggersby, because Cinderace basically just does its job better. Um, it can run more speed. The attack is a lot more comparable now that you have the stab on every move. That's a lot closer to um, the huge power boost than previous blaze would be and then you still have your fireball you still have all your coverage um, and you've got a nice fire water grass core to uh, to go with it so yeah cinderace uh, definitely shook up the meta in a positive way um, although it is arguable that cinderace is now the new s rank it's now too difficult to defeat cinderace um, and there are a couple of foolproof ways to do it. My favorite being Mental Herb Acid Armor Chandelure. Uh, big thanks to Potato Chan for helping me come up with this set. This is Flash Fire to prevent Pyroball from doing anything, uh, Mental Herb to prevent Taunt from doing anything, Acid Armor so that you uh, get your defense up on whatever coverage move uh, the Cinderace is going for, and then Pain Split followed by a Flamethrower is enough to beat it. Taunt lets you beat Yawn Sylveon, which is really, really nice, and it can go on a pretty cool looking Firewater Grass team like this. I did mention Grassy Sea, Grassy Surge, Rillaboom with that Wood Hammer and Acrobatics, um, Drum Beating on here for speed control, and EQ for type coverage. So yeah, um, you know, I really like the hidden abilities. I think the metagame was definitely shifted to a more positive, more balanced uh, zone, and I think that will improve further uh, when we see the rest of the DLC drop. So these are, this is pretty much what the type of team you'll see looks like right now on ladder, but right now it's only going to extend for another week or so, or even less, I think, because the hidden abilities are coming out, and um, we're going to be seeing a lot of things like Magnezone, we're going to be seeing Volcarona, we're going to be seeing Chansey, maybe even Slowbro. Um, I don't know how, how good Slowbro is going to be in one versus one, but I am excited to find out. Um, I am mostly excited, I think, for the return of Magnezone. That's going to help us out further against um, the somewhat omnipresent fairy types, uh, Primarina and Sylveon, are just going to go down to Thunderbolt and Flash Cannon, respectively. Mirror Coat is an, is an amazing thing to have with Sturdy. I think Magnezone is going to be a great general special answer, and um, I think it's going to go pretty well with the other new releases, Libero, Cinderace, and uh, the new DLC drops. So I can't speculate too much about what the DLC metagame will look like, but I can tell you that we are going to see a couple of dominant threats rise up. We're going to see a couple of speci specific techs rise up to counter them, and eventually we're going to see the meta balance itself out into something less centralized uh, than the earlier metas. We're not going to see anything resembling a Sableye meta or a Mew meta, and if we do, that one threat is going to be quick banned or suspected. Um, to the point where we can move on with a balanced and open metagame. Of course the 1v1 meta will constantly be shifting and evolving as the first and second DLCs uh, roll out and trends become more clearly defined. Um, you can expect teams to continue centering around the top one to two threats 
and their most reliable counters. Um, cookie cutter-esque teams of an S rank plus the counter to the S rank plus glue will remain viable, uh, but the individual Pokemon in these roles will continue to change over time. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate your continued support. I hope you guys found something to learn from this video. I hope something uh, could inspire you. And I hope to see you all again next time.